once again, we're getting right into our project here. What I have is a one by seven. I also have two pieces of one by two, and I'm using my pencil here to mark where I'm gonna make my next cuts. I already have two angles cut in a the corner there. They're 22 and a half degree angles. And now I'm just going to take these boards out to my saw, and I'm gonna make a straight cut for the bottom, and I'm gonna make another angled cut of 22 and a half degrees there on the top. When I finish making those cuts, I'm gonna sand them quickly, then I'm gonna put them back where they go. I'm gonna use my brad nailer to nail them into the sides of my board. I'm gonna repeat this process all the way around the board until I have framed out my entire board. Now, I realize there's a much less cumbersome way to do this. Um, you could use a ruler and measure. I am a marker, not a measurer. Um, don't let that ruler on my mat board there fool you. I I started avoiding math right around the seventh grade and I haven't really looked back. Um, so let's talk about the tag top there. Those are 45 degree angles and um, that wasn't really hard to discern. If you make a lot of miter cuts, you recognize that angle when you see it. The other angle I wasn't sure of, and listen, I did not like make a midnight run to Walmart to get a protractor to finish out, uh, decide what that angle was. I really just took it out to my miter saw and your blade only locks on certain angles. So I just went around all the options until, um, I knew that that was the right one. So that's a 22 and a half degree angle. What you see me doing here is I'm making an upstroke there and then I'm sort of drawing where the angle is gonna be before I take it out to my saw. And then um, I wanna keep my blade on the outside of that drawn line because I have to account for the width of my blade. So here I am. Um, this is the upstroke I was talking about prematurely. So I'm making that upstroke there. And then I'm just sort of drawing where the angle is going to be so that I remember that I'm cutting out from there. I'm starting my saw on the inside of that angle and cutting out. So I hope this all makes sense to you. And I realize I'm, I'm shaking my table with my my brad nailer there there's no earthquake happening we do we do hurricanes in florida i don't know if you heard but i live in southwest florida so uh it's a little fresh in my brain right now anyway here we go so i framed the entire outside of my tag piece and now i'm going to use the same process with my nail gun to attach it to a one by three and this is just a piece of scrap um trim board that I bought at Home Depot off to 70% Hi there, this is Jennifer again, just popping on to let you know that I am super thankful that you're here today. I hope you're enjoying the project. And I know it's a doozy, but I think if you stick with it to the end and you make it, you will have something that you are super proud of. Okay, all that being said, um, thank you so much to those of you who subscribed this last week and liked and left comments. Those are three ways, at least three ways, that you can help us achieve success on YouTube. And we're gonna need your help along the way. Obviously, we can't do it by ourselves. Okay, second thing. Um, next week, I have a great project that I loved, um, and I promise you that I have more to offer than just sunflowers. So next week, we're going to be finishing up this guitar, but see, it's all but finished. There's just some details I want to add, and I want to show you how I do that. But we're also going to be creating a custom piece that involves cherry blossoms. And so that's what we'll be working on next week. The following week, I'm even more excited uh, for that project that we have coming up because it is my own artwork. Um, it's really what I do. I produce fine art and so that's the basis of my business and that's the lane that I've chosen for myself and that's where I want to be. However, I love the art of crafting as well so anytime I can combine the two, that's my passion. So I want to show you what I've had made and what I'm going to make available to you all to order. Um, this is piece of my own artwork that I've had 
made into decoupage paper. And so that will be available for you to purchase um, within the next couple weeks. I, I believe that we're going to be doing that project two weeks from tomorrow. So it's my goal to upload a new video every Friday. Um, you know what? <laughs> this is a huge learning curve. So I am learning this as I go. I've never produced a video before last week. And so I know last week's wasn't perfect by any means. And this one won't be either. And the next one and the next one won't be. So we're just going to be perfectly imperfect together. And if y'all can help me by liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing out to your friends and family, that would help me so much. Thanks guys. Stick around to the end of the video and see how things turn out. All right, at this point, I've taken my piece out to my workshop and I've sanded all those joints. All the rough edges are gone. And now I'm just taking some lightweight spackle from the Dollar Tree. I'm just pushing it into all of those lines between my joints uh, on the top, the back, and the front. It's probably not necessary on the front, but I like for things to be neat and well done so this is a step i'm willing to take then i'm going to wait for that spackle to dry and i'm going to sand it down again then i'll really be ready to start this project so this was the first step now we're to the point where we can add our molds i'm using wood glue and hot glue to adhere my molds to this board um, obviously, you know why we do that. Uh, the hot glue is so that it will stick immediately and the wood glue will hold it long term. So here I go. If you notice, I don't use the hot glue on top of the wood glue. I use them in different spots because I don't think they mix well. Okay, um, now we're adding these braided molds. And these are all cast in resin. And later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to use amazing casting resin. Um, I did these ones in advance of this project. And don't worry, I see that glue drip in there. I didn't see it at the time, but I catch it in a few minutes and I wipe it back. I know y'all be worried sick about that. But um, anyway, so I'm using this casting resin and I can, I can use these ones in advance, the ones that don't need to bend. I can make those in advance. But the one on there on top, I'm going to have to make that one later because I need it to stay pliable. Anyway, again, same thing. I'm just using wood glue, a combination of wood glue and hot glue to adhere those molds all the way around my tag except for the top. And if you notice there, I'm, um, see, I'm getting rid of that glue just like I told you I would. Now, here I am. I'm going to cut the edges of those molds at the same angle that my boards are cut at, as close as I can get to it anyway. Um, same thing all the way around. These particular molds came from Hobby Lobby. Once I started buying IOD molds, I started seeing molds everywhere I went. And so unbeknownst to me, before I started buying IOD molds, they're actually everywhere. There are Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Joann's. Anyway, this little tiny mold came from Amazon, and I'm using those opposing corners there on the top, but I feel like they're they're definitely not able to, to be used with clay. I don't know how you'd get the clay in there and then get it out safely. Um, and I'm not quite sure about resin either. I, I know I, I don't really have the vision to do it that way. So I'm using my precision tip hot glue gun to... Just fill it up with hot glue. Those are going to dry and they're going to look every bit as good as they would if I had used resin. They're going to be, they're going to retain all that detail and I'll let them dry and then I'm going to pour my resin here. I, I'm, I'm going to laugh at myself here in a minute because you use two parts, um, 
equally of one and two, and then you put it in your mixing cup and you stir. And here I am just stirring it like all out of the cup. Like, I don't know what my problem is. So you don't have to stir it that vigorously. I have no idea why I did. I, I thought, you know, maybe, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, for about 30 seconds, you want to stir it and you can sort of feel it heat up as, as you stir. So here I am, I'm feeling that rope mold and I poured a little too much resin, so I'm filling up that beaded mold as well. And I'm sure I'll use that in a in another project soon. It doesn't dry quite that fast, but it does dry quickly. It dries in about 10 minutes. So here I am uh, demolding my little corner pieces that I want. And now I'm gonna demold that braided piece. And I'm gonna show you that, yes, it, it's bendy. There you go. So I'm just gonna glue it down the same way I glued everything else down with my combination of wood glue and hot glue. And um, the hot glue is even more necessary for this particular piece because we want it to not bend. We want it to stay how I form it until it cures. So there's a good tip for you. Um, I hear that you can put the resin castings in the microwave if you need them to soften down again, but I feel like that might not be the best thing for my microwave. And so I, I don't want to try that. So I just wait until it's necessary for me to use them and then I cast them right before I use them. And I've made at this point dozens of these particular shelf sitters. So at this point I have a system down that works well for me. So we're just going to attach those corner pieces. They're opposing corner pieces, so you do need to cast each of them separately, not, not the same one. Use each of them. <clears throat> and those, I believe, came from Amazon. I've also seen the same ones on Timu. So those are available um, several different places. Now we're ready to paint this project. Um, I'm just using Waverly chalk paint in plaster and I'm using a pointed brush that actually is really, really nice. I didn't know really what a difference a good paintbrush made until I bought a few of these on Amazon. They come in a pack of three and basically the shape of them really holds the paint so well that you, you don't overuse your paint, you don't waste it and it also it gets into all those corners and crevices really well. So we're painting this entire project. We're painting back, front, side, bottom, every bit of it. If you see a part that's not painted, don't worry, I'm coming back to paint it. Um, it might be that I'm working on probably in the span of this video, four different projects because um, I didn't, I didn't make them all at once and I didn't make them all in one sitting. So I had to film as I had the opportunity. Here you are. Um, I'm filling my palette with different paints because now it's time to paint sunflower. This is where the real fun part is for me. This is this is the part that I really enjoy. So I'm using a really stiff brush. Um, this isn't a new brush. This is an old brush. And you can see that I'm really pushing the paint into the mold there because I don't want any of the white to show. And so I'm using an old brush. I don't care if it's smashed. I don't care if, if I ruin it during this process necessarily. But, um, and I'm also using a combination of metallic paint, flat paint, and a paint that's made by folk art called, um, oh, what is it called? I'll think of it. Um, oh gosh, I, I could have told you like, over and over and over again, like for the six times I've tried to do this voiceover. Anyway, I'll think of it, but I'm using a combination of paints because I like the way that they play off of one another. It's called color shift. <laughs> Paint is called color shift. Okay, There we go. So it's like almost like a, a what is that? A hologram it's it's iridescent when you hold it up to the light it just does different things and you're gonna see as we go here you'll catch um, 
glimpses of it as we go. I'm using several different um, colors that are the color shift variety. All the paint that I have here is from Folk Art, which is made by the Plaid Company. And eventually we're going to talk about the Plaid Company. Um, they have some good programs that you might want to know about. So here we are. I'm using another stiff, flat brush, and I'm just painting my petals at random. Um, I'm not going to paint every petal the same color, and you'll see that. I'm going to come in with some darker hues and some lighter hues. If I were to ask you what color a sunflower is, I know you would say yellow and brown and the leaves are green. And you'd be right. But there are also very, very many shades of yellow and brown and greens and even shades that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see. Because in art um, and in nature, Contrasting colors are found in the shadows and in the depths of a painting. So if I were actually going to paint this on canvas or draw it on a drawing board with colored pencil, I would be using deep purples and different shades of purple because for every shade of yellow, I would have a contrasting shade of purple. So that's not what we're doing here. Um, I'm just using a variety of color and you'll see as I go back and forth with my paintbrush and again I'm using a flat stiff paintbrush I'm not using a feathered paintbrush I'm not using a soft paintbrush this is a, a stiff paintbrush so I'm just being careful to get into all of the details there this mold allows you if you've ever painted this mold um, you know that you can basically shove your paintbrush right into the edge there along the center. I really like that. It, it, it's, it's molded so that um, you're not going to actually go on to the middle of that sunflower. You just, you can butt your paintbrush right up against the edge there and get in all those nooks and crannies. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, you're going to see me come in with some lighter colors on some petals, some darker colors. I'm also being very careful to get all of the edges and the sides of my petals and I'm trying to not get any paint onto the background, the white background. And if that does happen, I can always come back with my paintbrush and, and paint over it. That's no problem. In fact, at one point I do that. So we're just applying layers of paint all over our petals. Basically, if you look at a picture of a sunflower, a real sunflower, you're going to see that it's sort of an ombre paint job that they've been given. Um, in the middle, near the center of the flower, there's a dark color, and then it sort of ombres out to the edges of the petals where the colors are much lighter, but there are many, many colors and shades and hues of those colors between the middle and the edges of the petals. So I want you to see that um, it's always a great reference to have something in front of you when you're painting. Um, I don't know any kind of an artist that doesn't have some reference material. The great thing about IOD molds is that the artwork is already there for you. It's basically, I, I liken it to adult coloring books. It's it's kind of like that. This is just sort of a paint by number. Um, the artwork's already been prepared for you. You're just applying paint. But there is an artful way to apply paint. If you were going to slap a coat of primary yellow on this and then paint the middle brown, you really wouldn't have done any any service to this mold at all. It wouldn't bring out the details. It wouldn't let you see the depth of color and um, dimension that is available for you here. So I really, I love these sunflowers. I've painted a bunch of them at this point. I also wanted to explain to you why I'm willing to spend some more time on this particular project. Normally, 
um, you know, I'm sort of a one and done artist where I, I paint something or draw something and then I have it scanned and then I sell that piece over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, that's what I want to do. That's what I, um, that was my intention and my goal. Well, here I am painting a sunflower. Well, I feel the time that I spend on this project is justified because it literally cost me next to nothing to make. Um, the one by seven I bought at Home Depot on the 70% off cart for $3.38. The trim boards or furring strips that I bought on the 70% off cart for 47 cents. And you know, your molds are, are, a, are a perpetual tool that you use over and over and over again. So the very first time I sold uh, one of these pieces, I paid for the mold. So the most expensive part of this project actually is the casting resin. And the very best way to buy that for cheap is to wait for the Michaels coupon. They have 20% off coupon every day. So you can use that. And also, if you sign up for the Michaels Rewards Program and you put the app on your phone, every time you make a purchase, you get points toward a voucher. So every couple weeks or couple months, I get a $5 off voucher. And when I get that, I pair it with the 20% off coupon. And instead of paying $24 for a box of casting resin, I pay $16. Also, I don't know if you're aware of this, um, they do have a 40% off coupon that comes up um, every couple weeks, every couple months, really. And when it comes out, it's usable for several days, and you can use it every day. You can't use it twice in one day, but you can use it every day. And if it's the online coupon, what I do is I just order a pickup. So if there's a 40% off coupon and I want some casting resin. I purchase it one day with a 40% off coupon. And if I want to get a stock or an inventory of it in my workshop, I buy it again the next day at 40% off. So and I just pick it up on my way to the gym. So here we go. Um, I've gone back and I've touched up the middle there because again, I don't want any white to show. You'll also notice in my uh, Parmesan cheese can here. I'm putting all my all my paint brushes that are used so I can take them all in and clean them at once. This paint that I'm using here is called White Flash. It's one of those um, colors I was telling you about, the color shift colors. And what I'm doing here is, again, I'm using a clean, flat, stiff brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking the smallest amount of paint and I'm going around the edges of my front petals. And that's just giving it a beautiful detail, a beautiful texture. Um, it's just going to make the light catch the edges, edges of those petals. I actually love that. And I don't think that you could get that look from any other product, to be honest. Um, you could use white wax. You could use gilding wax. There's a lot of different things you could use to achieve a similar look. But, and I have all of those things, but this paint, gives it such a unique iridescent look and you're not going to get that with any other product like i said so you might want to look if you love to paint if you love to paint folk art is the way to go because um they make so many different colors so many different varieties of paints and if you don't know that you love to paint and you want to try it this is such a simple way to learn some skill because listen underneath every painting is a drawing and so this sunflower is your drawing so buy a pack of paint brushes buy a painting kit from walmart um, in the folk art brand and you know get yourself a fancy china plate and start painting you'll love it this is the most relaxing thing that i do um, there's a lot of tedious work that comes with um, crafting, and this is relaxing. Speaking of tedious work, that was the stencil that I made for this project. Um, I'm not showing myself weeding it because it is painful to watch, and that's just the truth. Um, something else I've done here is I have white waxed, or I'm sorry, clear waxed 
this entire project and wiped it back with a paper towel. I don't know why I didn't show that. I probably lost the footage. I do that a lot. Okay, so I applied the clear wax so that when I apply the brown wax that I'm putting on there now, I can wipe it back. Uh, the clear wax sort of acts like um, a lubricant, and so it makes my project uh, less receptive to the brown wax, and, I, and I'm not going to get it where I don't want it, and I can still wipe it back. So that's what I'm doing. This is um, Dixie Belle's Best Dang Brown Wax, and what I'm doing is I'm rubbing it on with my brush, and then I'm taking a paper towel and I'm wiping it back because I don't necessarily want it to change the color of the project. I just want to get the brown wax down into all those cracks and crevices and details. And then I'm taking a small brush, a small artist brush, again, a stiff brush, and I'm putting it between the sunflower and the board. There's some space there. There's some there's a shadow effect happening there. Um, if the sunflower were laying there naturally, there would be a shadow under it. So that's what I'm creating here. I'm just creating dimension. Like I said, um, the artwork is already there for you. You're just enhancing it. You're just making it special and spectacular. So that's what I'm doing here. And again, I had used the clear wax, so I'm able to wipe the brown wax back if I have too much. And I can keep adding it until I'm happy with how it looks. Listen, I'm pretty fussy this way. I could probably go on and on and on and, and do this for a long time. I, I'm typically pretty dedicated when it comes to artwork. And I, uh, I tend to spend months on one piece. There we go. Um, our very final step is going to be to apply our wording, and I used a stencil for that. I made that in my Cricut. I actually got the graphics from Creative Fabrica, and there'll be all sorts of links in the description below for you. There'll be one for the Purple Painted Lady where I buy my IOD products. There'll be a link for Creative Fabrica where I'm also a contributor, and several other links for you to look at. There'll be a link to my Facebook store. Also, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll leave those links in the description box for you. Those are places where we can get to know each other better. Um, I know a lot of my friends have come over here to YouTube to help me out, and so I want to see you over there. I want to get to know you. I want to see your projects, and you can post them over there. Um, so here we go. We're just wiping down that brown wax. Now we're going to apply our stencil, and you'll see that I'm just going to burnish it on to my piece. I'm using a paint called Suede for this. It's from Michaels. Um, I love it because it's exactly the texture that it says. It's, it's very lightly textured, and I like to stencil with a thick paint because it's you're, you're just less prone to seeping and bleeding if you use um, a thicker paint. And I also love the way that when you pull up the stencil, it's sort of a raised texture. Your letters are sort of a raised texture, and I think that just adds um, a nice little element and it just looks more high end. I'll be really sad when I run out of this paint. I got it at Michael's on clearance and I'm not even sure they make it anymore, but uh, this is a color called coffee and it, and it just happens to match my project perfectly. So I'm just giving it two good coats. Um, I got a little a little juicy on the bottom there. You'll see, You can I can even see it now. It's kind of pooled there. So when I lift my stencil, there's a little more smearing than I actually usually get and more than I like, but you're going to see me come in and sand it down here. Um, well, no, you're not. You're going to see this instead. I do end up putting the heat gun on it and then I come in with some 220 grit sandpaper and I sand it down. We are nearing the end of our video and I just want to thank you all for tuning in today, for watching our project. I hope that you're able to make a project like this. I'm also hoping that you'll like, subscribe, share, 
do all the YouTube things as the young ones say I need y'all's help reaching my goal here like I said I can't do it by myself and I need y'all's help next week we'll be working on those guitars we're gonna finish up the sunflower one and we are also going to work on a um, cherry blossom guitar that's next week I hope I see y'all then thanks for watching don't forget to watch how these turn out. See you next week.